Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're going to review the veteran Sherman S. So, let me tell you more about it. First up, huge thanks to eWheels for partnering up with me to make content about this wheel. There are some affiliate links below if you want to support the channel. And they actually sponsored this series of videos. So huge thanks to them. But with that said, this review will not sugarcoat the veteran Sherman S. And I will show you all the good things. And also the bad things. About this wheel. The review, just like my other EUC reviews, will be structured into six categories. First, we'll talk about safety, then durability, ride, performance, features and practicality, and lastly, a conclusion. There is a lot of subjects to cover about the veteran Sherman S, and I've been very pleased to ride this wheel over the course of a couple of weeks and over 800 kilometers of use. With that said, let's start with safety. Now, some of the elements here might get a little technical, but I'll do my best to explain it in a simple, not over complicated way. I still need to mention those points though, as they're essential to the safety and the whole being of this electric unicycle. Starting out with charging, we do have a cold charge port with a GX16-5 port. So if something was to fall into those charge ports, or if there would be a short circuit on the charger, pretty much nothing would happen. The charging will only engage if the motherboard recognizes that a charger is being plugged in. So no short circuits or sparks here. Nice. The Veteran Sherman S does also come with passive cell balancing, which means that if you charge it to 100%, the batteries will get balanced, as the name suggests. This ensures that the battery pack will stay healthy for a longer time. However, this is no smart BMS and several functions are still lacking in comparison to InMotion or Kingsong wheels. For example, you can't check uh, the voltage of individual cell sets. This is the smart BMS function. There are no temperature sensors in the battery or even in the motor. Now, if the battery is well designed, you don't really need them so much, but it's great to have, especially if it's very cold outside. And in the motor, I think they should include a temperature sensor in the future. This is quite important, especially if you do some heavy trail riding. A smart BMS would be great too to check on your batteries every once in a while. I really like the fact that the main battery plus and minus ports are separated on this wheel. And this is a first that I see on any wheel ever. So that ensures that there's a smaller risks of short circuits too. But what is lacking here is a separate line for charging. Charging and discharging the battery goes just through those 
two wires. For safety reasons, it would have been better to have those separated. But even so, the fact that charging goes through the motherboard first will prevent any sort of short circuits coming from the charge port. A typical bigode slash veteran behavior here on the motherboard is also that the voltage readout is incorrect and not calibrated. I really don't like that as uh, reading 100.89 volts on a 100.8 volt wheel isn't something that you want to see. Now, don't worry, the BMS is reading the correct voltage, but it would be great to have the actual voltage correctly displayed also on the app. You can calibrate the voltage readout by first uh, checking the voltage with a voltage meter on the battery packs themselves and then adjusting for the difference on an advanced setting in the display of the Veteran Sherman S. The battery on the Veteran Sherman S consists of two 24S 4P units. They are connected separately to the motherboard, so there's also redundancy if one of the battery packs fails. And they do communicate with the motherboard, so if there's something wrong with the battery, you will get tilt back and you won't be able to ride on the wheel, which is phenomenal. There's also fuses, 40 amps on each side, so if something goes wrong there, okay, you're safe as well. And the battery cells they use here are Samsung 50Es, so also no complaints here for this huge battery pack. We should have enough power and headroom to push it hard. Moving on to more physical features, uh, the battery pack is also protected by a magnesium shell and plastic on the wheel well, so this should be fairly safe in terms of impacts. Um, one thing I really don't like though is at the bottom of the wheel um, there's a plastic cover and underneath that cover you will find the wires, the high voltage wiring that connects two sides uh, of the battery packs together. Now this should be in a more protected area and um, definitely not where water ingress is possible, where you know silicon can wear off or it will be not properly uh, put on from factory. Uh, so be careful with that, maybe check on that when you receive your Sherman. I would like to see those wires protected in a better way, even though impact and damaging those wires mechanically is not the most plausible thing if you would fall on this wheel. Moving on to more software related safety, the wheel is equipped with a beeper which will beep if it has to, if the wheel will decide that it needs to beep. And tilt back, so the wheel will force you to slow down. I'll tell you guys when those beeps or tilt back happens. First up, there's alarms for power draw, and there's actually two modes on this wheel, a usual mode and a high speed mode. So in the high speed mode, it will beep later than in the usual mode. So usually you will hear the beeps either if you go really quick, <laughs> or if you accelerate too hard. Both is possible and I have done that on a wheel, uh, the beeper is still audible. However, compared to Emotion and King Song, those other wheels will actually tilt you back if that happens because you might not hear the beeper and I think uh, that this option is actually a better one which would keep riders safer um, than just a beeper. Now there is a ton of headroom here, even if you start beeping you go over the beeps, it will ride a fair amount quicker but still I think it's not as good as a progressive tilt bag, which we have both on Emotion and King Song wheels. There are also alarms for low battery riding, so there will be a tilt bag slowing you down. It's very interesting that you, when you start riding, it's like tilting you back like crazy. You stop for a second. And it's like, no, actually, no, I'm good, I'm fine. And then you're like, okay, cool, let's start riding. 
and then it's again oh you know what uh, actually I forgot I, I have a very low battery Adam <laughs> so it's really easy to write the last bit of battery so then you are like ah, okay you can't write anymore all right then never mind I'm good I'm fine <laughs> And even a low battery mode, which I will talk about more in the features section. If the wheel would overcharge, so you have the wheel charged to 100%, you go down a hill right away, it will tilt you back because, uh, well, you're charging the wheel if you're braking, so you have to protect the batteries there as well. There's a tilt back and beep when overheating the wheel. This didn't happen to me. I didn't um, ride it hard enough and it was winter time here in Vancouver, so kind of hard to do that. So there's quite a lot of alarms and safety protection here. The thing that is missing the most for me is progressive tilt back. When it comes to water resistance, this is always a difficult subject with wheels as there might be an IP rating, but is it really legit? Well, I was riding this specific wheel through rain and electronically speaking, everything was fine. Um, the batteries are also wrapped in shrink wrap and they're behind, you know, magnesium and plastic. So this should be fine. Um, the motherboard doesn't have a um, rubber gasket around the cover. So this is a potential point of ingress. Didn't happen to me, but it is possible. So the wheel is water resistant somehow. Um, but it definitely could be better, especially around the motherboard cover. Additionally, you really need to remember to close the charge port. Um, there's a charge port flap cover, which is very annoying to close. And um, you just need to remember about it because the charge port is in the front. So if, it's, if it rains, you know where the water will drip. Additionally, the beeper I had in this unit was fairly susceptible to riding in rain. I don't need those small okay. anyway. yeah. yeah, beeper doesn't work anymore. Beeper, don't leave me. Come on. Yes, go back. Maybe, maybe tomorrow it will work. Back alive? Almost. Alive. Yes. And even on just damp ground, uh, some water would spray on it and it would stop working. So the improvement needs to be done there as well. So to sum it up, it is a pretty good water resistance here, but with some minor tweaks, it can get actually really good. With that said, now we are through with the safety category. Let's move on to durability. Most of the veteran Sherman S structural elements are made out of a magnesium alloy. That is the outer shell or sort of main chassis of the wheel, the motherboard housing as well as pedals. We are yet to find out how this material behaves on this wheel, but during my testing I didn't find any major flaws in it. It does scratch and it took a couple of tumbles, but it's nothing bad and it doesn't rust which is great. With such a design though, if you crash, it will be a lot more expensive to exchange shell elements, especially that here we don't have L hangers. The pedals are mounted on the structural side cover of the veteran Sherman S. And talking about structural integrity, initially when unboxing the wheel and first riding it, I had concerns whether this wheel will remain stiff and tight because there's essentially four screws on each side which hold both sides of the wheel together and there's an additional eight screws per side which hold the cover to the suspension element and then there's additional screws on the bottom which hold both suspension elements with the motor so it's all a bit of an origami but for now I was happy to see that nothing was becoming misaligned or there was no clonking nothing really concerning that I could see but we will need to wait for some really long range reviews from users to see if this wheel will remain structurally sound. However, every once in a while I did tighten the screws. They 
were becoming just slightly, really uh, a small amount loose, especially the outer ones on the shell. But when disassembling the unit and changing out the suspension elements, I noticed that there was no Loctite in the screws there. So some screws were a bit too loose for my liking. So I hope they do improve on that during the manufacturing process. I think that one area where Veteran really missed out is to build a bridge between two of the suspension units because one piston is for rebound, the other one is for compression. Both of those pistons shocks work in a very different way and this is why my concerns of misaligning arise. So if they would add such a bridge between the two forks like usual downhill or any bicycles have that would improve the whole structural integrity of the wheel a lot now it's just plastic and a mother guard when it comes to the pedals i noticed when riding that they have a slight very slight amount of give and this is maybe even maybe i'm even wrong but i see that there's a bit of chipped paint on the l hangers and this might lead to the pedals just being slightly differently aligned when there's pressure on them. I actually even checked them with a angle meter if they have the same angle, both left and right, and they do, so it's all right. But when riding, it just feels a bit odd. I generally don't like how those pedals are designed with the extensions. I think that's uh, really not needed, a not needed feature. They can just make bigger ones and leave it be. The small Phillips head screws that hold those rod in place don't seem to be strong enough and over time those pedals were becoming shorter and shorter while I was riding the wheel. So then I had to unscrew it and screw it in again. The pedal folding mechanism also started to have a lot of friction and some concerning sounds. Um, the mechanism to open and close those pedals with clicks, I get, I guess, just get dirty or I know something happened to it. I hope it will be fixed in a future version. Or maybe there's a way that I didn't find out how to clean up this mechanism. I have to say that I am quite impressed with the durability of the suspension mechanism overall though. It's very stiff, there is no play, no shakage, no rocking back and forth, and it is also the smoothest one in the game. It's crazy how well the suspension works on this wheel when it does work. And I say that because there will be another point about that further on in the video. There's two options that you can select for the shocks, a 58 pound spring and a 62 pound spring. For all riders over, I would say even 70 or 75 kilograms, I would take the heavier shock. In the softest setting, it's still plenty soft. And if you want to do some more heavy off-roading, more jumps or stairs, you can still make it quite stiff definitely more stiff than the 58 pound spring. The suspension doesn't require any air pumping, so there is no need to have an air pump and also no worries to have less pressure in the winter. It's also funny to hear how the oil moves around when you tilt the wheel around. This is totally fine, totally okay, uh, but probably interesting if you hear it the first time. Sounds a little bit like my stomach after Denny's. No, I'm kidding, my stomach sounds perfect after Denny's. Anyway, it's not all smooth sailing with the suspension because it does have a little bit of a scratchy sound. I think that's the m plastic mudguard piece inside. Again, nothing major to worry about, but still a bit annoying. The suspension did also become a little bit sticky after a while, especially riding in those winter conditions of Vancouver. So I think that bicycle shocks also require some sort of maintenance to keep them smooth. I think that's what we need here as well. Uh, the suspension still works very well. Uh, it just has those like small stages and this is something I did also notice when riding e-bikes and using, for example, DNM shocks. Here we have Fast Ace, so it is a shock manufacturer, but definitely nothing premium like, I know, Fox, Olin's or other shock manufacturers. One last thing to note here about my suspension unit is that a seal actually broke 
on my veteran Sherman S. I don't know why, maybe it is upon impact on the lighter shock or something else, the seal did break, which caused probably a lot more stickiness on this suspension unit. Although the motor was advertised as water resistant, sadly my bearings did break. <laughs> Now, from the time where I was recording the video, Veteran already changed uh, the sort of bearings that they use in uh, their Veteran Sherman S. So hopefully this problem will be resolved, but um, there is some sort of issue where water can drip in through the motor wire into the bearing compartment, causing those bearings to rust. I hope this will be not a problem in any future versions. When it comes to other areas of durability, there are also plastic or nylon bumpers front and back, which should protect the wheel during falls and will be a cheaper elements to replace rather than a magnesium shell everywhere. The rim, extremely durable actually. I'm surprised, like there's a broken Veteran Sherman uh, rim club and I don't think there will be a Veteran Sherman as broken rim club because thanks to the suspension and thanks to this new rim on the Veteran Sherman S, my rim was totally straight and I was doing many very many stair sets and jumps on this wheel so bravo here good job veteran but to conclude the durability of this wheel i have to tell you guys that this wheel went through hell and back with me i've put it through its paces i've went up inclines i did jumps i did stairs uh, we rode through rain we rode through off-road like all kinds of scenarios uh, this wheel was in pain and even with that after 800 um, kilometers have just like some minor issues which could be solved with a little bit of tweaking like Loctite in the screws um, or better bearings. Well, I, I wish it had good bearings from the factory. I think it's still quite impressive how durable this wheel is. The only changes that I would really like to see in a future Veteran Sherman S is number one, the bridge in between the two pillars which would help with structural integrity, as well as a solution to the bearing issue. And now let's move on to the ride of the Veteran Sherman S. And if you want to see a full video talking about the ride, please check out the link in the upper right corner. Anyways, now I'll give you a brief summary of the ride of the Veteran Sherman S. And first of all, I have to tell you, this wheel is extremely versatile. If you want to go on the street, no problems. Off-road, that's fine. If you take the bicycle paths, it's still comfy. And if you want to do jumps, you can even do that a little or, you know, going downstairs. Uh, this wheel, most importantly, has insane suspension, versatility and options. You can select the rebound and compression and this wheel changes drastically if you do anything to those two knobs. I was playing around with those knobs a lot. <clears throat> And I found out that pretty much anyone who will take this wheel and ride it will find a nice comfortable setting for it. There's plenty of settings, both for compression and rebound, which will turn the Veteran Sherman S to the Veteran Sherman S that you want to ride. So not only will you get less fatigue and you'll be more comfortable, this is actually safer for everyday riding as potholes or small curbs, unannounced jumps will not be a problem anymore. You just glide over them. But there is no way around the weight of this wheel. This wheel weighs around 44 kilograms, so it's pretty heavy and you will feel that you need a bit more effort when braking, accelerating with this wheel, turning. Especially for lighter riders, it might become a bit of a hurdle unless you want to have this wheel as a gym wheel. There are three riding modes on this EUC, just like on other models. There's soft, which is uh, well the softest setting, and this might be actually easier to accelerate than on hard and medium. Uh, then there's medium mode, which is right in between the two extremes. Um, I found myself using this mode actually sometimes, not soft mode, but medium mode um, quite a bit. But most of the time I was in hard mode. Um, there you get the most acceleration and the most responsive kind of ride. All of the settings are nice and you can decide which mode suits your riding style the most. 
The wheel exhibits pretty much no pedal dipping when accelerating and braking. It seems to have some sort of correction to the pedal dipping behavior. I like that a lot. In turns, there's almost no pedal dipping as well, but actually there's just a slight bit if you initially turn and then it sort of levels out. Um, so it's not perfect yet, but is very, very close to it. And pretty much in everyday um, riding conditions, you won't feel this pedal dip at all. It is a huge leap forward from both the Sherman and Abrams lineup of wheels. The veteran Sherman S also has a very nice weight distribution. I didn't feel many wobbles on this wheel. It's in general very stable, both on high and low speeds. I think up to like 60 or 70 kilometers an hour, it's really awesome. And if you wanna go faster, then a 22 inch wheel will be probably a better choice. Damn, well, we're talking about those speeds nowadays. The Veteran Sherman S also does come with a seat. It's a pretty small seat, but yet it's pretty functional. I was riding this wheel a little bit with the seat, but the position is not my favorite. But the big pedals do help a lot with seated riding, as well as the handle in the front does help to maintain balance. If you want to have a wheel just for seated riding though, the Master Pro is the best for that. The Veteran Sherman S does come with a Kenda 262 off-road street knobby tire. It's actually a dual sport tire. Um, it's both good for well, street riding and off-road, but doesn't excel in either of them. Uh, what I mean here is that if you are going on a street, it will remain very stable and will have no wobbles, but I just can't lean quite comfortably enough and get more grip in those turns. I really prefer a street tire on this wheel, um, even from Kenda, which would make the well, street ride a lot more comfortable and still in off-road conditions. Uh, the, the knobs do help a little bit when off-roading, but if you encounter some thicker sand or a bit more mud, it will still not be as good as a real off-road tire. So for general use, yes, but I would like to have a street option as well. To sum up the ride of this wheel, it's very versatile. It's a great adventure wheel. It's a jack of all trades and, well, not a bigode master. And since I initially got the Veteran Sherman S, I was very happily choosing this wheel on longer rides, shorter rides, for errands, etc, etc. It just works so well and the suspension is so satisfying, just as well as the ride with pretty much no pedal dipping, good response time. I guess the only complaint here is that it's heavy, but there is sadly no way around that with suspension and this battery size. Right, let's move on to performance. And right out of the gate, I want to say that this is by far the most high performance 100 volt wheel available right now on the market. It has plenty of top speed and also plenty of torque and pretty much in everyday scenarios, you won't need more than that. Still, if you want to have more performance, you have to go 134 volt bigode, which will have a bit more torque and more headroom in regards of top speed, especially the Master Pro. I did a acceleration test on this wheel, but to be honest, it sucks pretty much. Uh, the conditions weren't the best for testing acceleration, as well as my pad setup, I could have done it better. So the acceleration here, not really good, but I'm sure that I can redo that someday, or maybe someone else can do an acceleration test of the Veteran Sherman S, which has better results than that. When it comes to braking, here's my 40 km an hour to zero time. Um, nothing unusual, um, it just takes a lot more effort with this wheel to accelerate or brake hard because the pedals are closer to the axle. If you want to have this wheel set up a bit more nimble, uh, try to ride it in a soft compression setting, then the pedals will be also closer to the ground. When it comes to inclines, also plenty of torque here. I did pretty much all of the usual grades I do except for 45 degrees and it just goes up. I just couldn't go up all the way because then I would have to go backwards and this is pretty scary. I'm not yet able to do that. So no problems with inclines, but I still think that 134 volt bigode wheels do have more torque and I believe they will probably run also cooler, but this is something we are yet to find out. I'm sure that the temperature sensor is also placed in a good spot on this wheel because the temperature uh, goes down quick on the display, which means it's the temperature sensor is closed 
close to the MOSFETs on the motherboard. What that means is if the motherboard gets toasty, you will actually hear the beep and the alarm instead of frying the motherboard right away like on the veteran Sherman. The top speed really changes whether you are in a usual mode or in high speed mode. In the usual mode, the beeps kick in around 70 km an hour, something above, and if you are running at 70 or 60% battery, then you will have beeps at 60 km an hour. So, yeah, it's it, in usual conditions, it's fine, but it's not as high performance as Big Ode. But at the same time, if you turn on high speed mode, it, uh, the beeps kick in a lot later, like around 75 or even 80 kilometers an hour. So plenty of headroom there. And at lower battery percentages, you can be sure that you will be still able to ride around 50 kilometers an hour. So the high speed mode enables you to go a lot faster, but I didn't feel that much of an increase in torque. And this wheel, if you really push it at around 40 or 50 kilometers an hour, you will hear beeps that, you know, mean that the wheel is overpowering a little bit. So it is not as limitless as the Master Pro that I was testing a while ago. When it comes to range, it goes somewhere in between the Veteran Sherman and Sherman Max. I tested it around 112 kilometers, but it was very cold and I was doing quite a quick range test. There's also a low battery mode, which lets you drain the batteries down to, I think, three volts per cell. Um, I wouldn't ever recommend you to do that, except for if it's an absolute emergency. I didn't test this mode during the range test, so probably I would get around maybe five or 10 kilometers more. I don't even know. The range drops really, really quickly when you're in those lower battery states. If you want to charge this wheel up later, stock in the box, you get a 5 amp charger. So this is really nice, around six or seven hours for a full charge. You can also connect two of those for around three hour charging time. And if you really need high speed charging, I think it allows up to 20 amps. Like I think 15 is still safe, but I saw some videos really maxing out the charging rate. So this thing can charge pretty quick, which is great. That's all about performance, now let's move on to features and practicality. Starting out with the display. The display is one of my favorite types and it's always readable both in the bright sunlight and in the night. In the main view you have speed, the battery percentage and added information about the wheel like voltage temperature, the amp draw or watt draw of the wheel, which are both new, and the single mileage and total mileage. A short press on the top right corner button turns on or off the light, and a long press the laser in the back. A short press on the lower right button turns on or off the tail light. If you press and hold the OK button, you can access the more advanced menu of the wheel, where you can select the riding modes, the lean angle of the wheel, so if the wheel tilts a bit forward or back. Tilt back and alarm speed are both at 280, so they're pretty much off. A bummer, we still don't have any setting between 58 and pretty much off, although the power draw alarm always stays on, which kicks in according to speed, battery level and, of course, power draw. <laughs> then we can select the brightness of the display in three settings. We can calibrate the wheel horizontally and put it into transport mode. By the way, to turn off transport mode, you, you just need to plug in the charger into the wheel. Then we can select the units, kilometers an hour or miles an hour, as well as calibrate the voltage of the wheel. The next setting is low battery mode. You can turn it on or off, preferably leave it off. And then there's also high speed mode, which will let, enable a bigger power draw and higher top speed of the wheel but Leaperkim also doesn't recommend to use it all the time as it will put more strain on the controller and battery. Then there's also a advanced, advanced menu which you enter by long pressing the OK button even longer and then there is quite a lot of advanced parameters. Probably if your Sherman S would ever break or there would be some sort of issues you could find out more data in a screen um, if the battery packs are balanced and so on and so on. So. It's good to know, but probably you won't need to access it on your wheel. Still, it's cool it's there. 
When it comes to the headlights, they're really bright and they are also height adjustable and they're totally enough for nighttime riding. However, they will blind oncoming traffic, which is a bummer. I think that a motorcycle like headlight with a cut off point on the beam is a must have for all electric unicycles. The beeper sits on the housing of the headlight. It's rather exposed and during rainy riding, uh, water got in there and sadly it didn't work that well when it was wet. Then it dried off and worked well again. So I hope this will be improved in the final version. And sadly the beeper has no loudness adjustment which for example Bigode wheels have. It's still pretty audible while riding but not the best I've heard yet. The tail light is pretty visible and height adjustable as well, but the housing is just a bit more plasticky than the front one. The tail light also has some sort of turn signals. When you tilt it, you see you will see one side of the tail light light up. One very cool feature of this tail light unit is also the lasers, and they're just so cool. I didn't think that I would be excited about lasers, but if you see it in person, well, they're pretty dim, but well, my EUC has lasers. You can turn them on or off either by pressing the button in the back. The button in the back doesn't work well, it gets stuck often and I can't turn on the lasers that well. But you can also always just press the button on the display which is for the front headlight longer and then you have three settings on, off and a blinking one. The wheel just like most new wheels doesn't have any Bluetooth speaker. I miss that. And Jack from Electric Dreams misses that too. The trolley handle has a good height to it and it locks in place both on the bottom and on the top. Um, the locking mechanism is also very satisfying. However, the material of the trolley handle isn't very satisfying because it's made out of plastic. So you can really bend this thing around and the grip is I don't, I don't even understand how this could be considered ergonomic. However, I don't think it's that bad actually. It's rather sturdy when turning the EUC around and other than the uncomfortable grip, I was actually enjoying this trolley handle a lot. But you know, I also like the RS handle, so take my opinion here with a grain of salt. This wheel doesn't have any lift switch, so if you want to put this wheel up, you need to turn it off. But the button is located in a very convenient spot, so I don't really consider this a negative point. Lifting the wheel up for stairs, though, is not necessary, actually, as it's fairly easy to push it upstairs or roll it downstairs while you're walking next to it. Or if you really feel like it, you can actually ride up and downstairs with it, too. The adjustment of the suspension is pretty inconvenient and you usually need a screwdriver or a coin for it. But Hulai Market is to the rescue. They actually already made a mod where you have a small turning knob to adjust the suspension. Really cool guys. Good job. Cheers Wukash. The suspension elements also do stick out a bit on the top. So depending on your leg shape or leg height, they might be hurting a bit for me. It was no problem, especially when wearing my Liat dual axis, but I can imagine that for some riders this might be a bit of an inconvenience. The mudguard situation on this wheel is fairly good. It is a big one-piece mudguard, which prevents a little bit more water than usual from spraying onto your toes. It also protects the inner shell of the body from any water spraying or debris falling there. And in the back, it's fairly long, but actually not long enough to prevent all water or mud spraying up to your back or backpack. It's a slightly worse performance than the excellent mud guard that we had on the veteran Sherman and Sherman Max. But at least it's for free and comes in a box. Although initially I thought that the kickstand will be not good enough and it will be too flimsy, actually it performs really well. And even putting this wheel down on a kickstand on grass or slightly sloped surfaces, it holds up really well. It just wobbles around a bit, but this doesn't uh, take away anything from its general stability. So yeah, not too bad there. And it will be cheaper to replace if it breaks. 
The pedals are definitely a point which I don't like that much on this wheel. The studs are milled in, so once they get a bit more dull, you have to replace the whole pedal. Actually, grip tape, I think, works even better than those studs because they're sort of indented into the pedal. So if you don't have a, you know, mountain shoe sole, you have just like a flat sole like Vans or other shoes, they won't even grip that much on those studs. And once they get wet, they get really, really slippery. So, oh, this is not a pedal that I like. I, I think that the slide out function is totally unnecessary. And in general, also those rods kept like getting in and out. I don't think that they're the most sturdy pedals either. So. Uh, yeah, I, I think that if they totally change those pedals out to something more like Nylonov or the stock Hex um, Begode pedals, then it would be a lot better. Adding to that, they're neither height adjustable nor angle adjustable. So very, very basic setup here. And even more so, it's a totally new mount, so we'll have to wait for um, manufacturers like Nylonov or others to create pedals for the wheel, as pedals from older Sherman models or Bigode wheels won't fit on this wheel. Although the stock side pads are a bit better than on the old veteran Sherman, they're still miles away from what we have from the competition and don't allow for the maximum safety of the ride and maximum performance of the ride. Um, while, while using them. The tire change on this wheel is pretty difficult as the wheel is a bit like origami. There's quite a bit of screws, but it's actually a bit easier than I initially thought uh, in the unboxing. So you can actually just remove one side and then you have access to the wheel well. But then you still need to unplug the battery, all of the motherboard screws. So this is really a lot more difficult than on the new Begoat wheels, which are a lot more modular. In terms of ease of fixing something or swapping some parts, I gotta say that still be good with its modular packs and modular design will be a lot easier to work on than the veteran Sherman S. With that said, that's all I have on features and practicality. Let's conclude it all. So then the million dollar or well, $4,150 excluding tax. Question is whether this EUC is actually worth your money. And I gotta say, as a EUC lover, I love the veteran Sherman S. I love to ride it, I love its performance, I love the adventure capabilities, speed, torque, and the whole package of it. But when I look at the price, I gotta say, I step back a bit and I see the NQI GTS e -moped. and hear me out. I know, Moppet's different thing, different ride, everything different, but it's just 150 bucks more expensive than the Sherman S, which is a smaller device, a device with a smaller battery, and that is not road legal. <laughs> so I think that UCs are getting ridiculously expensive, and when actually good quality Muppets with a bigger battery start getting cheaper than a electric unicycle which has a smaller battery that's that's a point where I start to think well are we actually heading the right direction so in general I think that UCs are getting very expensive but still the thing is that on an EUC you get something that you won't get on a Muppet. You can still store it at home, you can use the bicycle paths when you ride slowly, you get an experience which is totally different than an e-bike, a Muppet, a scooter, etc, etc. So in regards to looking at the competition um, of EUCs, I gotta say, well, it's a lot of money, but if you want to have the most comfortable ride, the best suspension, the most versatile wheel that might also be more durable. We don't know yet. I was testing one of the first ones and uh, we don't have any super long range wheels yet. Um, then yes, the veteran Sherman S is amazing. But in the grand scheme of things, slowly we're getting to the point where those things are just getting ridiculously expensive. Um, so with that, a bit of a maybe unexpected conclusion. Um, this is the veteran Sherman S review. And if you're still here, I'm back in Warsaw then leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. This took me forever. If you're still here, please smash that like. Uh, this video was a lot of effort. Take care, guys.